William Butler, Kangson, Kristen Weber, Kevin Raleigh, and Aaron Bells. If you'd each come up, just have a seat. Tell you, what, I'll start off with. We'll go with Aaron first. You can pass the mic down this way. So, Aaron, why do you write? Why do you write poetry? Well, one thing I noticed, um, I, I, I've been thinking about tonight, is that I think a lot of my colleagues here think uh, would describe themselves as Christian artists or Christian writers, Christian filmmakers. I I really don't think of myself as a Christian poet. Mm -hmm. And I and I don't know why, but it's just sort of dawning on me tonight. I mean, I I believe I'm a Christian. I mean, I'm a Christian, right? But I don't know what exactly the special relationship between my faith and my writing is, except that it's an expression of my uh, the image of God in me. I'm naturally just cr you know creative, so obviously I, I, I write out of the that seed of creativity. And what fascinates you about language? Well, I, I, it's so such an important um, way of organizing the world for people, and I think my my calling, I mean, if I could call it that, is I think people get into, without thinking about it, they get into ruts uh, or patterns of thinking about things with language, and I feel like my job is to try to upset some of those patterns um, and make anybody some upset tonight. We'll go, we'll go on. I wish we could go longer, but we'll just have to go tight because it's so long. We'll go to Kevin Raleigh. Kevin, uh, his artwork is the artwork on the, as you entered the gallery, the first artwork you saw, the very, it's darker compared to the, the artwork. Many of you have seen it, a lot of biblical scenes. Um, someone would not describe it probably as precious moments. Not precious moments. No. Not a precious moment amongst them, unless you like swords and things and blood. What? Uh, <laughs> I'll leave that. Uh, I have my own issues with precious moments, oh, yeah, but I'll yeah. leave that. Or precious blood, for that. Well, yeah. uh, what's the value uh, for a Christian? Uh, why is depicting evil important? I think the, um, the most important thing is that we have to be honest in our work. And if we are to see the world as, as God sees it, as everybody else sees it, then darkness and evil are a very real part of that. And so um, someone... Wiser said that uh, art can survive a um, mistake, but it cannot survive a lie. Hmm. And so in order for us to really, uh, I think, be honest with ourselves and with our world and with our faith, evil has to be uh, able to be contended with. I mean, Jesus contended with evil, and I think we must be able to contend with evil and, and darkness, along with struggle and strife in, in our art. But as Christians, we, we struggle with a hope and a, a promise as our foundation. So our struggle is, is, is upward looking. I'm still reeling from your film. It moved me so much, <laughs> I can't even tell you. Mm -hmm. um, a world without a ceiling. And so in seeing the work, we don't have to explain or dictate how people are to feel. We show the world as it is, but we show it from a, a, a view that sees something bigger that there is a light that is overcoming the darkness. But the darkness still is, by necessity, must be, must be there as well, Absolutely. for us to be honest. Absolutely. Thank you, Kevin Raleigh. And we'll go to Kangson. Kangson is our you. Malaysian uh, artist. Yeah, greetings. <laughs> uh, Kangson, how is, uh, we had some interesting conversations since you've been here. How does the church, uh, you know, the church, at points in the history is embrace the arts in the last several hundred years has not done as good of a job. Is, is it different in Malaysia? How have churches in Malaysia interacted with the next generation becoming involved in the arts? Well, yeah, uh, basically uh, Malaysian churches are, might say, ignorant uh, towards the arts and the efficacies of the arts, uh, basically because uh, our, the churches that was planted in Malaysia was uh, coming out from the Enlightenment uh, era, and it was uh, centered purely on the word. 
you can see in the layout of the churches, generally it's the pulpit that is right smack in the center. And so most of the churches would be blank walls. Uh, but uh, lately, perhaps uh, I would say since the late 1990s, we are beginning to like, uh, hey, the place of art, uh, is a, art is a gift of, from God. And uh, we are seeing more of uh, a greater affirmation, a greater appreciation. And uh, artists like us, uh, by, by the way, being, being, a, being an artist who happens to be a pastor for myself is cool <laughs> to the younger generations. <laughs> and so I hope that uh, my being involved, you know, I, I was a, I mean, I see myself as an artist who happens to be a Christian, you know. I'm, I'm first of all a human, human being created in the, in the image of God. And that's who I am. He has given me the gift uh, to reflect on who I am. And so my whole pilgrimage, or you might say my whole Christian pilgrimage, is about discovering who God is. And uh, he has given me this medium to discover myself uh, in the visual, by visual means. And so, uh, I just want to say one thing, that the churches uh, back home, they are excited about the arts now. I, by God's grace, I have been able to curate uh, Mika's, the Mika's Initiative, which is Malaysian uh, International Christian Artist Show, uh, last year. And this year, when I go back home, November, early part of November, we are going to have the second uh, Mika's and I'm getting emails every day because we have included workshops mm. and we have mothers registering saying, can my, can my six years old child come mm. and attend a dance expression workshop, things like that. Mm. So I had one lady this morning when I was uh, opening up my emails, it say, uh, she says, can my 12 years old son, yeah, attends your Drawing is Fun workshop. So I'm glad that God is doing a lot of wonderful things through the arts. And my coming here, I'll be taking a lot of lessons back home. Thank you. Mm. Thank you, Kang Sir. <laughs> and Kristen, so how did homeschooling prepare you for Hollywood? <laughs> On a totally different note. <laughs> it was a culture shock. Um, it was like Laura Ingalls getting off the bus. <laughs> um, no, the, the biggest difference, I think, or the being homeschooled coming to here was just the changes from going from small town to city. Like, I called home, I was like, Mom, there's graffiti on the neighborhood watch sign. <laughs> like, <laughs> things like that. And, like, we were in a gated community, but it doesn't do anything if the bad guys are all inside. And so, um, yeah, it was just the little things like that. More city than it was uh, homeschool. Very good. Okay, and then we'll go to William Butler. Thank you. Uh, William, in reading your, your bio and finding out more about you, it's interesting because a stereotypical notion about artists is that they're self-absorbed, self-focused, isolationist. And, uh, and yet looking at uh, Thomas Lift, can you just tell us how, how you're different? Because you're involved in economic development and uh, some other great things. Yeah, that's right. Um, my wife and I, Rania, um, love my life. She's amazing. And uh, nothing moves forward without, uh, without her uh, joining me in it. So um, Thomas Lift is really uh, a passion God has laid on our hearts to um, operate and work in heavily impoverished areas and creating opportunities so that God's blessing can um, move in those places. And the artwork is primarily a platform, whether it's the live art that I do or the studio art, it's a platform for God to have a voice and speak through that creativity. He's also encouraged us to um, create a line of clothing in these impoverished areas. In many of the countries that we've visited, and um, even within our own country, there are folks that know how to sew. If there's a nation out there that isn't sewing, that's going to be a surprise. And so we've been to many countries that sewing is their primary source. And uh, one of the toughest industries to work in, the garment industry. And so God has put on our heart to create a line of clothing 
um, that glorifies him, that it's made um, for his purposes. And so in us going and being um, a source of income, a source of opportunity, a source of renewal to break some of that bondage of poverty in other countries where the blessing has been removed because of certain types of competition or certain types of restrictions. We want to come to be a blessing so that blessing can be compounded and returned in a 90-10 portion. So our hearts have been set so that 90% of the profits that we make as Thomas lift the garments being sold will be returned to the communities Mm -hmm. in forms of uh, other opportunities and scholarships and building infrastructure within the factory system for um, children's equipping and breakfast and lunch and just those types of things that I think we take for granted here. Mm. Wonderful. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you to the panel. It's always encouraging every year just to meet people from all over the world and what they're doing with their creativity and imagination making a difference. Um, I have a few thank yous uh, before we're fully done. And then we have the French pastries outside, which I won't force you to enjoy. You'll just leave more for others. But I encourage you to. Um, But I have a few thank yous. Uh, Would the other gallery artists just stand up so people can know who you are? Or the gallery artists. (laughs) Jennifer Kimbrough. All the way back to the month. And then I want to thank uh, I want to thank Summer, who is the head of the production here in this room. Where is Summer? <laughs> Summer Newman. And Terry, Terry Harkins, where's Terry, the manager for the gallery? Is she here? <laughs> Out getting the pastries ready, I guess. Uh, and uh, we want to have a special thank you to Vineyard, this church. They've been a great support. And uh, Brad Bailey and his wife are here, right? Uh, just been a tremendous support. Our home for seven shows. And then I have a couple more thank yous. Uh, one is to my wife, Michelle. If you know me, she really pulls this thing off. Where is Michelle? She's hiding. And then Christina, Christina Grice, her right-hand person through the year. Christina Morris, I'm sorry. Slipped and said her old maiden name. Where's Christina? Outside getting pastries ready. I hope there's pastries left. Everyone's out there. Okay. Um, and then any other alumni here, people that have been to the show in the past, there's quite a few of you, would you just raise your hands? Exciting. Thank you. Well, thank you all for coming. Uh, Some of the artists do have their CDs or DVDs or books. Patronize the arts. Make it a habit. Uh, These are easy ways to support artists in very tactical, practical ways. Support them. Enjoy the food. Talk to the artists in the gallery. Thank you for being here. God bless you as you drive home. I know some of you are from Santa Barbara. Some as far down as Carlsbad. Drive safely, and thank you for coming. God bless. (laughs) 